and they're off. For the Play Coral Racing Super Series for free, Juvenile hurdle over two miles, and it is Calif de Belay and Harry Cobden who have taken the early lead, and they lead by a couple of lengths. To the grey, Roaring Legend on the outside of Cadeau de Joie, and then Yellow Star towards the far side, all in new Galactic Jack the Back Marker as they go over the first of the eight flights of hurdles that are all safely over with Calif de Belay out in front. His lead a couple of lengths over Cadeau de Joie racing in in second and then a couple of lengths back to Roaring Legend in third as they reach the second flight and as they go over it the back marker and a little low at that flight was Galactic Jack. So it is Calif de Belay who leads in second place early is Cado de Joie uh, in third position Roaring Legend and then a dispute for fourth between All In You who races against the rail on that one's outside is Yellow Star and Galactic Jack is the back marker and he's racing around about seven lengths off Calif de Belay and Harry Cobden as they take the turn by the stables and make the run now along the side of the course. The next two flights come up quite quickly. They will be flights three and four. Calif de Belay leads the way by a couple of lengths to Cadre de Joie in second. A similar break to Roaring Legend in third. Improving into fourth, all in new. He's now got a length over Yellow Star, who is racing in fifth. Galactic Jack is still the back marker, and the leader, Calif de Belay, stood a long way off that third flight. Coming now on towards the fourth and halfway, Calif de Belay at it. This time he gets in a little tight. His lead, though, two and a half lengths over Cadre de Joie, and then a further three lengths back to Roaring Legend, and a length and a half to all in new. Ridden along now is Yellow Star and still the back marker is Galactic Jack as they make the turn now through the halfway point and on now towards the back straight in the Play Coral Racing Super Series for free. Juvenile hurdle, Calif de Belay, winner of his only start so far at Compiègne. He leads by two lengths to Cadeau de Joie in second position. David Maxwell has now sent all in you in chase around the outside, has now claimed third around the outside of Roaring Legend as they race on now towards the first of the two flights taken down the back straight. And the lead now of nearly three lengths opening up for Calif de Belay as he approaches this next flight. He Takes it in front of Cadeau de Joie in second position. Just been niggled along to get closer. All in you in third. Roaring Legend is in fourth. Ridden along Yellow Star and then Galactic Jack. They're entering the final three quarters of a mile and about to cross over the third from home. Calif de Belay and Harry Cobden have the lead. David Maxwell all in you now improving into second position. Over in third came Cadeau de Joie in the hands of James Bowen. Improving Galactic Jack from the back of the field, moving around the outside now to try and dispute fourth together with Yellow Star and Roaring Legend, and it is Calif de Belay. It could be that Harry Cobden's giving a bit of a breather after three out, because they're all closing up now. It's a packing field, in behind all in you. Cadeau de Joie against the rail, Roaring Legend and then Yellow Star, and the effort of Galactic Jack was brief. He now has dropped away, so they're making the turn in, and now they've got two more flights of hurdles to take. Calif de Belay still travelling well. In second place is all in you. Then to the outside, the grey roaring legend trying to pick up. Cadre de Joie towards the inner and a break of a couple of lengths back to Yellow Star pulling up two out. Galactic Jack over the second from home and it's Calif de Belay who's opening up once again. He's gone clear by three. Roaring legend now into second. All in you is held in third as they come down towards the eighth and final flight. Calif de Belay at the last. He jumps it beautifully. His lead is falling lengths over Roaring Legend and racing inside the final 150 yards, Calif de Belay coming home to win on his British debut in the hands of Harry Cobden for Paul Nichols. Calif de Belay in second, Roaring Legend and home in third came Yellow Star all in you was fourth. Well, Paul Nichols' supposed quiet month continues at pace with two very smart juveniles in as many days and lots of interest still to come here at Kempton Park. We've just seen Calif de Burley make a bright start to his British career here, Paul. He was very well back to do so. He did so with a minimum of fuss. Is that what you were expecting or has that exceeded your expectations? Uh, we thought he was a smart horse. He, he does everything with a horse that won yesterday. Um, and he surprised us yesterday because you don't really know till you run them. Um, I loved the way he won on his debut and then John bought him and... My only reservation was he hasn't been in this country all that long and normally they need a bit of a break, but he, because of the fact that I knew I was going to have to run him as he'd won, we just cut straight on with him, didn't give him a break and he's just thrived on everything, he's never looked back. Is, um, he, is he different in terms of demeanour and the way he does things to most of the horses you would import from France? 
as I said, most of them need a break because they're normally very light and need to acclimatise and some can take 18 months. And you often see willy bite some nice horses and give them time and that's always in the back of my mind that I wasn't able to do that but he's never looked back from the minute he came in the yard. And um, He's a gorgeous horse, you know, he's a chaser, There's no, he's, that's what he was bought for and so we need to mind him. As Harry just said, he doesn't too many races this year, we need to look after him and we will. So is he quite a laid-back horse to deal with? Yeah, he is. He's, you know, looking at him walking away down there like he's done nothing. He is. And that's what you want to see. And in terms of his, his jumping technique and his hurdling, is he a sharp enough horse to be thinking about triumph hurdles with? Oh, jumping is brilliant, but he's not a triumph horse, is he? You know, I've run all those types like him in the past, Clanders a bow, Frodons, go on and on with those chases, and they always finish in the middle, end up superstar chases, and I don't see a point in running with a triumph hurdle. I just thinking aloud, he could come back here for the donors possibly, but we've got a few others for that here. Uh, Harry just said one run and pops look at Aintree, something like that with him. So, but all options are open. But I don't, I don't see him as a triumph horse, no, because he's the wrong type. But what about the horse he won yesterday, the Chatteris Fen Cabral du Matin? Would he fit that bill more or not? Well, we'll see after he runs next. I might look at the Victor Ludoran with him. But I've always thought he might be a horse for the Fred Winter. He's a smaller, sharper type. He's got a big engine. But he'll tell us next time what we need to be thinking. As I said, you're long in this division. Is this horse? that we've just seen win definitively at the top of the packing order in your in your juvenile clutch? Well, until Friday, Lyari was, you know, won the listed race up at Aintree, yeah. and he's a smart horse as well. But I'd say this one here probably is the... Uh, at the moment, but he's all about the future. He's got the most sort of raw talent. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, when he jumps fences one day, and that might be sooner than later, because I don't see any point possibly standing around over hurdles with him too long last year. He might have to go chasing in the autumn as a four-year-old, but that's his future. You've got Pick Dory coming up in yeah. the Sylvie Narco Conti chase. What sort of form is he in coming into this race? Uh, he's in top form. He, he, he didn't run his race. I know he won now. Somebody. I don't think he was quite right for some reason. I don't think he actually enjoyed the ground. But he's been working well. Good spring in his step jumping. So we're looking forward to running. And is Sonny Gino a good enough and progressive enough horse for this handicap, Mark? Your expression told it all, maybe. Uh, that's a tough one. You know, he went up six pounds the other day for winning like hard hell. But that was on heavy ground. Where probably he was one of a few that liked the ground at Aintree. Today's a lot more competitive on better ground. But he's improving rapidly. Thanks, Paul Weller. Thank you, Nick. Cheers. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.